Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Question War. I'm your host, Mr. Kothagian. Kothagian, uh, CR Republic lover. But uh, we gotta amend the Constitution. The office of Admiral Zafal Zark had a view straight through the round hub of Kothag onto the sea, and it was here where Zalathel met with her and her two, his two brothers, Zago and Zazdrubal. The zebra mare sat behind her desk with her brothers sitting on comfortable chairs arranged in a small circle. The Zarka's siblings preferred to meet in each other's offices, sharing a disdain for decadent establishment. Thank you for inviting us here today's off. Zalathel smiled. I feel like the political wind favors us, and we should take advantage by tackling the Constitution. Zephod smiles back, less genuinely. Zal, you cannot just tackle one of the most ancient documents on this continent. The Constitution is as old as the stainless banner of Azarta, or the Round Harbor. Zago sat in agreement. It survived the rule of the Khans and of the Storm King. What are you suggesting? Zalathel smiled bemusedly now. Don't worry, I would be the last to consider abolishing such a venerable document. I intend to bring to the Senate an amendment, which would stipulate that there must be a Zarsid Sufrit, and that this Sufrit has broad powers to preserve the Koltegian Republic. Well, the Kol Kothagian. Kothagian. Kothagian Republic. All three siblings pondered the idea for a moment, and Zazdrubal was the first to speak up. That seems to be like an excellent idea. Father always said that an emergency comes before the law, but now that the world has passed, we should formalize a position and preempt those who think our rules unconstitutional. Zago shook his head. I appreciate the sentimentality, brother, but our father need not the constitution. It's a piece of paper, and a zebra of strength would do best not to trip on it. And Zeph holds uh, uh, deeply. I know you three never consider my perspective, but let me frame it in your terms. The Constitutionalists know how you and our, our father broke the law. You cannot change our tradition with a flick of a pen. Those who oppose you will not be fooled. But reign in the excesses, work within the law when you can, and calm your hearts of many in this country. She stood up and grabbed a bottle of rum and a tray with four glasses from a cabinet. But before you decide, Zal, let me calm our hearts a little. Propose an amendment to empower the first Sufrit. Ooh. Never mind, the Constitution doesn't matter. I mean, increase more loyalty from the landowners, and get more stability that way. Pay lip service to the Constitution. To solid Constitution, you lose political power, get more stability, increases loyalty, huh? That would not be bad, because right now it's nothing. I don't know. We've got some comments to go through, too. I kind of like this one. You get more political power, and I like PP, so don't quote me on that one, but overwhelming military influence, huh? And we'll see what happens. Of course, we're doing it right now Dreams of United Zonica. Um, I think I read this one last time, so if you're going to do this again, please go ahead. I would like to reclaim Kar Alpaka. Lambat sees a Kolvatan state of Kar Alpaka from us after the Storm King's invasion order gain sea access for themselves. Since then, the territory has been out of her hooves. But the time has come to rectify this. We will demand the return of what is rightfully ours and prepare to take it by force if necessary. But we do want to reinforce the eastern garrisons. The Kolvatan bandits have increased their activity lately, mostly consisting of peasant rabble unable to accept their lot in life. They are a continuous nuisance for concern in the states of Kizil Zeb, Gotelstan, and Katrain. If we do not reinforce the eastern garrisons, the rebels might seize control over the entire region, which would be a bad thing. But some comments include, I think Kothagian uh, is pronounced pretty much exactly like Carthage. Carthaginian. 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 It's Kothag. Or Carthaginian. Carthaginian. I apologize for my mispronunciations. I'm so bad with this. Carthaginian. 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 Carthaginian Republic. Carthaginian Republic. My bad, guys. I'm so sorry. Call the Junior Republic. Uh, someone says, try to have the militaries coup the government by further reducing their loyalty. I have never done that path in my game, so it would be interesting to see you do it. Yeah, we probably will. Overwhelming military influence, of course. 60% uh, loyalty. They're very high power. Foreign influence. Trade with Skyfall. We could. Or we could just wait and get someone else here. Mm, that's not bad. Yeah, that's not, not terrible. That's okay. I like this one, too. These two are pretty good. Land owners are loyal. Uh, Zimsal Zanid is not bad either. Of course, we can grab stuff here as well. Daily Army XP gain, artillery, winter moon celebration, motorized mechanized attack and defense. Old guard is not extremely terrible. It does give you some benefits too, though. But let me save up for PP first. We only get 0.44 every single day, anyways, but still. Rearmament would not be bad. Reduce loyalty by 10%. Blessings from the storm would also not be bad. Persecute the opposition sounds like fun, though. Let me read about this one, please go ahead, because we're probably going to go with Persecute the Opposition. Up until now, our excessive leniency has enabled senatorial opposition to plot with radical agitators and to stir up unrest across the country. Zalathel will use the power of the 127, the highest tri tribunal on the land, to persecute prominent members of the opposition and push them out of office, paving the way for future stability. Yes, because that'll get rid of uh, legacy of the storm, oh, or political instability, yeah. Political instability. Yeah. And it gives us quite a bit more political power, too. And we do want to do all this stuff as well. 
Um, we need a lot of divisions over here, so for now, y'all can do this arenos. Have fun and don't die too much while you're over there. It would be quite unfortunate if they did die. Colt the Genian. Someone else says, uh, keep the military influence. It's a better path. And let's take a look. See here. Crack down on the bandits and Kizil Zeb. Having more than five divisions in the state increases the chance of success, while having more than 30% compliance it decreases the chance of failure. Cool. Uh, where are we at? 80% um, chance of Kizil Zeb, less resistance, more compliance. Small chance for that. 83, 80%. Oh, well, it's been all the political power we have right there. So right now, it's 18, 23, and 19. Rallying Karai. Resistance more than 70%. Cold Vol violently secede from them. Um, as much as I want to core that stuff, what's the point? Um, we're need more divisions probably too anyways. You never know what might happen. Appoint the commander of the east. Fortify Koltva. Reassure the landlords. Increases the loyalty of them by much more. Max factors in state does go up. Token land reforms reduces the loyalty. More compliance. Compliance is already pretty good though, but you lose max factories in a state and resource efficiency gain. Negotiate with Zerutid. Restore order in Koltva. It's now core. Oh, that's pretty good. Reassure the landlords. Appoint the commander of the east first. The generals of Koltveg uh, spend much of their time plotting and politicking and the rest of, on ensuring their own forces are in good shape. It's time for the first Sufrit to appoint one of them to take up the mantle of commander of the east, but who would be capable to pacify the unruly region before it spirals out of control into a full-scale rebellion? I don't get more political power. Oh, that's better. That's definitely better. That's not bad for compliance. Resistance, it's still going down. I don't want to spend too much political on that stuff. Too much political power. Uh, 50%. We might get cootie eventually, but whatever. And we'll do that too if when we can. And we'll of course reassure the landlords. If any zebra will civilize a cult vin or cult vins, it's going to be the landlords. However, their properties have been under assault by Zerutid's bandits, some of the key landlords in the region. <clears throat> uh, are at the point of abandoning their oh my god oh my god come on ventures if we do not protect and help expand their businesses by giving them our assistance we might yet make productive land out of our eastern provinces which would be a great thing um, so ahead of time zebra technologies charged organization heat attrition ooh more defense uh, let's get some alchemy that'd be good metallurgy that'd be nice grab some of that too cool 8%, a little bit less pony power. Uh, I mean, it, it just, I have to wait. I'm gonna beeline through this stuff. Uh, religious education, huh? It's not bad. Successful revolution, the new commander of the East, Father. How did you deal with the generals as problematic as these, Zalathel Zarka, Sufrit of Koltek, and heir to the Zarka family's power? He sighed as he looked up at the portrait of his father. The only answer he received was Zalakar's proud gaze staring down from his office wall. Taking power had been easy, but one particular problem with the Zarka inheritance was frustrating Zalathel, Koltva. Just like himself. The Kolth, Kolthans had fought a war of attrition against a storm king, but now they resisted Koltegian. Holt Hagian controls well. Under the guise of land reform, rebel leader Zeshmunazash Zerutid rallied the forces of Kolfa. The situation was dire, although the Kolthaginians' forces outgunned the rebels for now, they lacked a clear strategy. To crush rebel, Zalafel needed to appoint one of his generals to lead the way, as he himself was indispensable in Kolthag. Three candidates come forward first, although sadly both uh, of his brothers had passed up the job. First to apply was Bezel Shazar Zerutra ever looking to increase his own influence. It was in the secret that the zebra was an addict, but he could lead a fight if given enough incentive. Bazel Shazar would to pacify Kotva, but Zalafel worried about increasing the Sly General's power. A second applicant was Jezebel Zoblos, who was distasteful for the Kotva and people was well known. This zebra would do whatever was within her power to crush the rebels, but she had a one-track mind, and Zalafel feared that the general might pass up opportunities to undermine the rebellion in a different way than brute force. The final candidate was Ziliad Anizalid, a general who sympathized with the Constitutionalist faction. By all accounts, Ziliad was a de decent zebra, and his mild manners might help legitimize Kothagian, who will make Zerutid seem as Ruthless party. However, Zalafel feared the general might try to advance his own faction in Kothva, replacing one problem for another. After weighing the candidates for a while longer, the Sufrit decided to name a, a commander of the East. Ooh. Um. An influence is an addict. Pacify, by increasing the general's power. 
Jebzil? I like Jebzil. Why not? Compliance strength, resistance decay. Nice. Very nice. We can close out this one too. Mass adoption of FM radio. Nice. And like I said, it's a bit ahead of time, so let's grab some construction speed. Something else, very high, 50%, not bad. Medium power, not bad overall. Reassure the landlords. I negotiate with Zarutid? Zarutid. The Colfin rebels are on the back hoof now, but many Colfins still rally to their leader. The elusive Zeshumunazash Zarutid. General Jebzel Zoblos has proposed a more permanent solution to the rebel leader. General Zarutra will approach the Colfins and says he wants to overthrow the Zarkids. Once he has their trust, he will lure Zarutid into a trap and break the rebels' backs. And restore order in Coltville eventually. The streets of Kazil Zev are quiet now, most of the farms are being worked again, but most of Koltva, save for a few remote regions or remote mountain areas, are under the control of the military. The spirit of Koltvan autonomism has been broken, and now the region can look forward towards a prosperous future under Zalafel Zarka's leadership. The Siege of Koltva. Uh, General uh, Jebzel Zoblos arrived at Koltva, the head of a large military convoy. Uh, once in the province, Samir and her forces dispersed with sizable groups heading for Kazil Zev, Koltartan, and even across the interior to Merlaka. All urban settlements would receive a sizable influx of soldiers at first. It seemed like the new commander of the east merely intended to strengthen the garrison, but nothing could be further from the truth. Arriving in Kazil Zeb at the head of her forces, Jebzal Zablos would be quick to dash any hopes of a gentle regime. She commanded her forces to set up camp and ordered all non Kothans to leave the city. Within hours, Kothaginian soldiers had set up checkpoints at every access road, and all patrols had been set out to make sure no zebra could leave the city. Telecom cables were cut, making communication to the outside difficult. Even sea access was denied by a destroyer blocking the port. Meanwhile, the same scene would repeat itself across cities and towns all over Kothva. After the initial shock had worn off, several zebras from both inside and outside Kazil Zeb would attempt to come close to the Kothaginian perimeter, but were sent away with warning shots if they were insistent. General Zablos was watching with glee as she saw more and more of the city's inhabitants eye her perimeter with concern or desperation as the realization of what had happened and sank in. Eventually, she ordered her soldiers to bring in one of the braver Coltfins who had been hanging around one of the roadblocks for a while to her. The young Coltfin, barely a stallion, would look at the Coltaginian general with a contemptuous glare held down by two of Jezbel's soldiers. Let me go, you brutes, the zebra demanded, struggling against the soldiers in vain while Jebzel smiled amusedly. You Coltfins can do nothing but squirm after all, she leaned closer, her winning gr uh, grinning wildly. Until you filthy peasants stop resisting the rule of your superiors, you and all others in the mud huts over there will not be receiving any company, understood? The coffin's eyes widened and a squirming only grew more intense. You will not get away with us, you filthy daughter of Zargon. May the deep lord swallow you and the drag cult egg down with it. <clears throat> the stallions. A curse would just make the commander of the east chuckle. Take it up with Zarutid, and tell your leader it's up to him to decide if you will ever see fresh food again. Jebzo gestured towards her soldiers and they carried the young stallion away. They will break soon. Yeah, you know, they get slightly higher resistance. Getting more compliance is super important. Like super, 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 super important. Uh, do we have any? Int uh, we should probably get an intelligence agency too. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, protests. Uh, Sufrit Zalel Zarka shook his head and reread the letter on his desk before looking up at the portrait of his father, as always. Z Zamilkar did not provide any advice, just a stern gaze. Zashumon Azash. Zarute was the last zebra that Sufrit expected a letter from, not at least a letter so polite, with attached photographs and reports from Kothaginian uh, civil servants and Kotva. Dear Zelafel, I write to you in the understanding that we both share the common decency of zebra, by which I mean a basic respect for sentient life. Especially when it comes to civilian fo uh, civilians and foals. That common decency seems to not be universal, however, as your new commander of the East has demonstrated by besieging the cities of Kotva, which are Kothaginian cities, she has forced the civilian population into the conflict, causing much unnecessary suffering and a lack of food. Although I oppose you politically, I believe you understand your duty as Sufrit is to defend Kothaginian citizens. Therefore, I request that you replace Jebzel Zoblos with a zebra who is not willing to endanger civilian lives. In case information about the gravity of the situation has not reached you yet, I have attached photographs and reports by your civil servants about the extent of Zoblos' crimes. I implore you to make the right decision. Yours sincerely, Zesh Munazash Zaruted. Zalafel had no idea how the cult then even managed to send him a letter and could only guess at the zebra's intentions. Zarka had admit Zablo's methods were excessive, to put it mildly, if Zarutid was desperate enough to beg for a replacement, however. Could that mean the blockades were actually working? If that was the case, perhaps. The strategy might have saved more lives than it would cost in the long term. Keeper, the methods seem to be bearing fruit. I will not stand for this. Ziliad will salvage the situation. Nope. So we need less than 17% resistance. You know, we can do it all again. Um, resistance. It's kind of hard to see with these decisions here. 19.4. 21... So let's do it in Kazil. 
So right now they have 11, the breakout. Our objective tonight is simple to every Zebra. Zero Dude's calming voice was carried by shortwave radio to attics and hideouts all over Kizel. Uh, Zeb. We're cold thin rebels clutch their revolvers and rivals tie while listening to their leader. We escape the blockade and head for the mountains where we'll have freedom of movement. For that, we need to break this blockade. Everything depends on speed and coordination. Wait for my final signal. <clears throat> Uh, or well, wait for my flare signal, and then strike as one to overwhelm the enemy. We can do this, I will see you on the other side. With these words, they rotate, cut off the transmission, and loaded his flare gun and swung his rifle over his shoulder. Well, there were, the zebra headed outside towards the rally point for his unit. Half an hour later, the science was deafening. Zerutids left his unit on the edge of the city, sneaking for himself. There he was, prone in the tall grass, as close to the entrenched Colthaginians as he dared. This had to be enough time for all units to assemble. The Colt then reached for his flare gun and aimed towards the sky. The flare set a cascade of action. Colt then battle cries came from behind him and confused shouts from the front. With unflinching focus, the rebel leader grabbed his rifle and took aim at the trenches. The ringing of the shot cut through the air, the scream of his target muffled by the cranking of the bolt. A second shot slowed confusion. Uh, so confusion and fear as the zebra dug for cover. More players lit up the sky and searchlights aimed towards the comrades. Zerutid's third shot was already drowned out by the fire from all sides. His eyes, his eyes lost focus as he heard the hoofsteps of his commander's race towards the trenches. Leaving to his ho hooves himself, Zerutid joined them into the fray. His hoofs hit the sand of the trenches. To the left, a flash illuminated a frightened young Colthaginian face. While the rush gallop and the butt of his rifle, she falls down, safe for now, breathing heavily. The Colthan looks around to see his only comrades left standing in the trench, but lights and shouting in the distance. Uh, uh, indicated Jez Jebzel's forces would soon come to plug a hole. Zerotid again grabs his flare gun. The second flare signaling into the Colpins it was time to scatter. The rebels have breached the perimeter and meeting the other Zerotid. Finally, Zarashat Zerotid. <clears throat> we found a last night in a Kizil Zeb attic after the breakout man. The soldier pointed his hoof over his shoulder towards the cell door, although she might not be very cooperative. General Jebzel Zablos grinned eagerly. Oh, she'll be forthcoming, I'm sure. The general then opened the cell door and tried it inside. The captured zebra inside looked like a mess. Her mane was ruffled and unkept. Her eyes, which had been bag bags under them, stared at the general groggily. Jebzel sat down in front of Zarutit. Good afternoon, prisoner. Before Jebzel could say more, Zara's shot interrupted, her voice drenched in irony. Jebzel Zablos, you have gotten the wrong of sibling. You just missed him. Zashi's out of town. The taunt managed to wipe the smile off of Jebzel's face. No, I think you are exactly who I need, Zara shot. Your brother has been quite the thorn in my side, you see. You and me both, General. No change in tone. Now even the ever-confident Jebzel gave the Zara a confused look. Was this an act? The sister seemed nothing like her brother, yet her sources told her that Zara shot was with... Zeshmuna Zash for most of the rebellion. Maybe this was just the entrance she needed to her grin return. If that is so, why don't you help me get rid of this storm? I will get you and any zero you want out of here in no time, and then you can get your, get your home back too if you want. Focus appeared on Zarashad's disinterested eyes, but nevertheless, the offer seemed to not face her. <clears throat> I'd hope if I could, but if Zesh had one hideout, he'd have already been cavalry. Listen, he's way smarter than you are. If you care about your career, then just give up. That's my advice to you. Jebzel started to, we started to wheeze and punched her hoof into the table. Who do you think you are talking to, you filthy Colton? I don't believe or think you understand. If you or any other prisoners wanted to re related to the rebels, don't give me something. I'll have you all killed, thus proving my point. For every zebra you kill, you will create a small village of rebels. Murder is a way of getting zebras riled up. General Zoblos did not even hear Zarashat's final words. She already got up and left. We'll find Zarutid, no matter the cost. Oh yeah, 20%? That's gonna suck. Oh, are you kidding me? We can't do this one yet. Uh, that sucks. In the meantime, we're just going to go and do National Reconstruction Program. Eh, we can reclaim this. National Reconstruction. Yeah, let's do that one first. The aftermath of the Storm King's invasion left serious hardships throughout the country. Hardships can no longer be ignored. Zala fell plans to initiate a massive economic recovery effort. Best of all, he's generously using his own family funds to help support the project. So get more stability, recovery rate, better consumer goods, recruitable population factor, organization, and 15% more political power, which would be great because we're going to put down a lot of things here. We're going to put down a lot of things here. <clears throat> They're very loyal too, which is nice. Uh, one of the comments was, there's two things. There's a secret path in Hippogriffio. You need certain things to do stuff. Um, you'll need sea ponies. Complete the anti-harmonic activities committee. Head to the decisions tab and explore the, the sea until the sea ponies die. And, and bang pee pee. Uh, make sure you cultists win the civil war. And you have three leaders, which you can switch them in the decisions to do certain focuses in a certain tree in order. Good luck. And then, what is the timeline in this mod to the show? Because from how I see it, uh, on the year 1000 cause of Nightmare Moon's return to the show, then there's this update which talks about the Storm King showed up in 2017 movie. Um, so, basically, I'm not entirely sure about the movie. I, I've never actually watched My Little Pony, so. Someone else says, uh, he has an excellent idea for the TNO campaign. Start with Nixon, then get the Civil Rights Movement, and, or not get the Civil Rights Movement. I like RFK, but have him removed. And I like Harrington, because why not? Uh, someone says, can you play the Après Moi de la Luge, or Le Deluge mod? What if Napoleon won? So... 
I played that a long time ago when it first came out, so that was a lot of fun back in the day, but the word spreads. The mountaineer was blowing through Zesh Munai Zash's Zerut's mane as a zebra descended down to a village in one of his many small valleys that dotted the Kultvin hinterland. Under his hoof, the leader of the Kultvin rebellion was holding rolls of pamphlets. <clears throat> yeah, we'll go over there. Uh, uh, his compatriots descending the steep path after him did the same. Careful, now I'll take it personally if any of you fall and get there before me, Zarut had joked. His eyes focused downwards, careful with every step. There's been a lot of grumbling when the rebel leader had asked for volunteers for delivering pamphlets, as the fellow rebels all styled themselves during dashing heroes instead of delivering cults. The grumbling turned into embarrassment when the rebel leader announced he'd just do it himself, after which the volunteers rapidly applied. The zebra did not stay on the streets of the village for long and hurried to a large building, where they were quick to, quickly led in by an elderly mayor who smiled brightly. Zesh Munazash, in the flesh, she would say warmly before inspecting the stacks of papers the Kulpin rebels gratefully put down. We will have these spread over Kulpa and beyond soon enough. I wish they didn't contain such awful news. The mayor would sigh and shake her head. Kulpins need to know what is happening. The commander of the east has crossed the line, and any zebra who is hoping for a peaceful solution cannot look away anymore. Again, the mayor would sigh. It's simple when you bring it up like that, I suppose. The mayor would walk over to another room while muttering. Now you and your intrepid gunslingers have earned a reward for your daring actions today. What can I give you for my refrigerator? Yogurt, if you please. Nothing can be done, huh? What is this? Overwhelming military influence, of course, but what's, uh... Nothing can be done. Oh, that's right here. <clears throat> I didn't sign up for this. Is I'll be my witness. Uh, Captain Pazeb took a big sip from the bottle of rum on his desk and took a pen off his hoof. Why did it have to be me? Also on his desk were multiple files of alleged rebels. The last few days, and after new instructions from the commander of the East, the definition of the rebel widened considerably at the same time. The burden of proof needed lowered, and the sentence for any rebellious act was heightened. <clears throat> Excuse me. Death would be the only acceptable sentence, but Captain Pazab was convinced that Juno did not sign these sentences herself. Surely then she would understand the stress she had put her officers under with these orders. Not after a big sip of rum, the zebra took the paper in his hoof. Sixteen, not even an adult. Did not show up to his landlord for work three days ago. Known slacker. A three citizens testify suspicious behavior. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure some dude was looking for a way to fire you, young Stanley. Poor sod. With a flick of the pen, Pazab signed the death sentence. Right, right. So what do we have here? The next paper contained the details of an elderly mayor. Some sort of innkeeper, already well above the age to retire. I don't think she can hold a rifle anymore. Let's hope no zero will miss you. Nothing can be done. <clears throat> a third, a fourth, a group of six. Then Captain Pizzab lost count. Nothing can be done. Ten more? Another zero might be worse. How big was today's stack? At least he cared. He'd say to himself he would be he would intervene if it was something really bad. That's why the captain had to play along. There would be a time to make his stand. Pizzab fantasized about the heroic intervention. But sure those cult fans would understand. Nothing can be done right now. My bottle is empty. That's a lot more resistance. Brewing mercenary trainers. Does not have a political advisor. Oh. <clears throat> Army mercenaries is not cool. National reconstruction. Requires. Oh. I want a professional one. I think having a professional would be better overall. As much as I like this one. Um, Army XP gain 15%, 5% more. Get 25% more organization. Military leader cost goes down. Uh, invite foreign military advisors. Well, that would actually equal up to the. Uh, no, actually, you still get more organization with that one. Uh, consumer goods gets worse. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Definitely want to rebuild a professional army. Demand war reparations. Religious education versus this one. Well, I guess we have to go religious education then. Okay. Scientific ed. The old debate. Well, it's good to get rid of that one. And this will definitely help us out as well. I don't really want to lose political power, but despite what some arrogant zebras may claim, the gods we worship are what bind us together as Coltaginians. Being a central part of our shared culture, having this reflected in their education provider folds with vital moral instruction encourage them to be responsible spiritually and sound adults. So do that one. Karapaka should be nice as well. And when we can, we will do negotiate with them as well, but we'll get there eventually. Rearmament? I think I read this earlier, but a substantial portion of Coltags, or Coltags, uh, military industry was destroyed in the aftermath of the Storm King's invasion. Given the dire threats we face, ensuring the security of the nation will require completely rebuilding this productive capacity. On the brink of war, I come with a simple message, my Sufrit. The situation is spiraling out of control. Your appointee is only worse than the situation. Perhaps another zebra would have been in a better fit. Zalafel, Azarka weeds of the zebra's accusation, impatient with the governor who was 20 years a senior. The stallion, who had been in charge of Koltva until the commander of the East arrived, was a leftover from his father's inner circle. Governor, you asked for patience, while well, I've waited to act for months. You were the one who did not manage to bring back order after the Yetis were driven out. I do not care at all for your military advice. Tell me about this situation properly or go back to your duties. Sensing that he had little to gain from questioning the Sufrit's decisions, the governor elaborated on the Kultvins instead. 
Zarutid grows bolder by the day, of course. Oopsie. Um, encouraged by his swelling numbers due to um, <clears throat> the zebra stallion cocked politely. Recent events, many culpins that were ambivalent towards us have drifted to the rebel camp. The commander's broken what little trust the common culpin had left for us. Only the towns with direct armed presence are still controlled by us, and even just supplying their troops is getting expensive, as the soldiers no longer trust local suppliers. The governor eyed the super expectantly. He had known the reign of Zamlukar Azarka, and expected Zalath felt like his father to come up with some sort of creative solution. The super, meanwhile, nodded solemnly. So be it, I shall dispatch new orders to the garrison and mobilize reserve forces. He then turned his attention directly to the governor. I believe we are resigned to trot the new path of war. It is the only way left to save a republic. Prepare your staff to evacuate from Kazil Zeb immediately if the worst should occur. The governor frowned. You see no other, you see no other way, my sufrit? Zalath shook his head. If the Kulpins do not bend, they will have to be broken. The Kultarian camp. Or Kultartan camp. The newest structure, on uh, Koltartan, Koltartan, was a compound structure or surrounded by electric wire on the outskirts of town. Ramshackle guard towns were manned day and night, overseeing the prisoners inside every day. As columns of prisoners were marched into the camp. Some were wearing suits, some poor workers' clothes, the young old stallion mayor. The only thing the prisoners shared was a Kulpfin heritage and having been de designated as a dangerous element by Jebzel Zablos. The barracks of the Kulpfins had to sleep in were shoddily made, and the beds were whatever the Kulpfinian soldiers could find from them. Despite his orders, newly prompted, promoted, Camp Commander Pazab worked with the local farmers to give the prisoners as much food as he could. None of his subordinates protested. No soldier lifted a hoof when he arranged pickups for arrested foals. Most of the soldiers who guarded the camp were silent, only speaking when communication was necessary. Then there were those who were few who were louder than ever, though who could not care for the judgmental looks of the others as they consumed their lust for power over the innocent. Despite following his orders in the most gentle way he could think of, Pazab had noticed the latest affront by Jebzil had broken something among the Kulpins. For every danger they had arrested, uh, there would be a retaliation. By now, the camp was the only safe place for Kulpthaginians in the entire city. He did not know how to respond. He did not have it in him to enact reprisals. The commander did not want anything anymore. Perhaps it would be better if he went home. No. If Pazab went home, home would be ruined as well. At least he and the others still had innocent memories of home. The Kulpins did not even have that, and they would have the revenge. This can't have been the plan. It's alright. It'll go down eventually. Distance growth. Eh, it's going up. Okay. Is this going up or down? 0.3. No, it's not going up. But it's not going down. 0 0.7. 0 0.9. Nice. Well, let him rebel. And see what happens. Um, military training. Oh, look at this. I remove Colton Rebels. Huh. 53.6. 76. And they still have the rebellion. Okay. Well, it is what it is. We tried. 88% chance. Adds a defiance. Okay. Well, whatever. Legacy Storm would be good to get rid of religious education course. Alchemy. And to see what will Oh, happen. no! A military coup! Tensions between the government and the military have been growing for a while. Officers began to meddle more and more in politics, protesting with politi policies they disliked were implemented, while well, the government repeatedly reminded them that the military is supposed to serve the state. Eventually, these tensions reached a dangerous boiling point. Rumors began to spread of a conspiracy to overthrow Zelothel Zarka and impose military rule upon Kolthag. The Stufford had urged citizens to remain calm while secretly trying to brace for the inevitable. It all began before the sun rose. In the capital, all roads leading out of the city were blocked by army barricades, and all communication lines were cut. Meanwhile, the Navy sent ships out into the Gulf to stop any maritime traffic from entering or leaving the city. Soldiers marched out of the barracks and swiftly occupied post offices, newspaper printing presses, train stations, and the Bizarre Citadel. By dawn, most of the city was already in military control and a curfew had been imposed. The Senate attempted to gather in an emergency session, but it was too late. Batrun Zarias, permanent leader of the army, confidently led a column of soldiers towards the Senate building rather than oppose them. The zebras guarding the Senate surrendered without a fight, allowing Batrun to enter and arrest any dissident senators. Within a few hours, an official proclamation was made that the emergency military rule would be instated, and martial law was in full effect. The disposed Sufrit, Zalath el Zarka, tried to escape the capital, but was captured and placed under house arrest. Some loyalists to the old regime tried to resist, but were swiftly crushed, and the capital soon became eerily quiet. The news spread across the country, and the military secured its control of all major settlements and strategic locations. Within one day, the military were taking complete control of the Carthaginian Republic. The future was uncertain, as no zebra really knew what they were planning to do, but already, some were fleeing, fleeing the country while they could, fearing what would happen soon. A successful coup isn't treason. Ooh, we lose a lot of political power and stability. Oh boy. But look, oh my god, look at that hair. Oh my goodness, that facial hair. Whoa. But now we get a new focus tree. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, I, I need to play this path several different times because we were doing okay ish, but we're doing well, but still. Um, for the military junta. After much planning and preparation, our coup was successful and the old regime has fallen. Koltag is no longer being led down the path of ruin. Despite this, the situation remains precarious. Now, a new military government must be formed to oversee the restoration of order and stability in the country. So, do we still put down stuff here, or what? Because they still have 
rubbles and such. I mean, this is still going up. Oh, there goes the Constitution. I guess we don't believe in the Constitution anymore. Um, over here, it's only Defiance, so it is actually still going up. God dang it. Um, and then over here, it's still going up probably too. So, yeah, that's not good. Oh, we, we completed the focus. Oh, okay, so this is going to screw things up greatly over here then. Stratocracy. I love being a supremacist. Oh, we got rid of our generals too. Um... And we'll also do this too. Keep them down. 125% up app. Uh, a lot of subs. And then suspend the constitution. In order to purge weakness and the corruption which has taken root within Kolte, the junta must be empowered to take drastic action. Only by suspending the constitution can such measures be taken. Dissolving the senate to impose a nationwide curfew, taking control of the media, and cracking down on political subversives for a start. The lords of war. Gentle zebras, Colt is saved. Thus the victorious warlords were gathered in the Sufret's chambers, politely stamping their hooves in approval of Desaria's proclamation. Those fools will no longer harm a great nation, and together we shall restore to our former grandeur. However, we must not put down our rifles and get to work. Zarias would then take a seat in Zarka's old chair, as his underlings stood at attention. Anarchy needs to end in fast. However, we can't be seen as usurpers and defilers of the Republic. I'll have the clerk start writing up several acts and later on improved a constitution to enforce a rule. In short, keeping up the pretenses of legitimacy and once our work is complete, we can retire in peace into some distant beach in Makawaya. Makawiya. He pointed to Sufet Zerutra. Bezel Shahzar, you'll be in charge of Throtkat. It requires a special touch when it comes to pacification. Jebzel, same for you. And Zapsa, Zarol, you and your cousin can handle Hippon. Ensure that the privateering is kept to a respectable amount. And Zarello, make yourself useful. Now then, are there any questions? What about you, Batrun? Zoblos asked with impatience. I'm in Koltek to handle the politics and down the line establish myself as a new Sufret and a Supreme Chief. While the position rotated between us every few years for the sake of appearances. The answer mostly stated the warlords, but the discussion continued for a while. Uh, Zoblos, in particular, having many gripes about the distribution of power, responsibilities, and rewards. Zares was quick to pin down any irreconceivable differences, but for the most part, the Junta seemed to have a cooperative streak. Kolthag will be reborn. We give political powers, stability, support, support. He gets promoted to field marshal. Generalissimo. Nice. Unlocks warlord decisions. Local pony power resistance target. Oh. Siv Mares adds Zablos fiefdom. Intel to enemies goes down. Interesting. Now with extra... Oh, now the resistance is going down there. It's going down here because we got all the extra stuff there. It's actually really nice. Cult and Rebellious. Dominant landowners. Yeah, it doesn't help with the compliance, but whatever. And it's going down too. Not bad. 100%, huh? They're still very loyal. Ah, uh, Warlords of Cult Egg. Bathroon's Zyre's Zayr's coup would not have been successful without the support of his allies in the military. In return, he promised some territory to govern. Now, warlords rule parts of Kolte, normally under the rule of Sufrit, but the generals are ambitious and might not be satisfied with being mere subordinates of Bathroon's Zyre's. Moderate, 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 moderate. Grand territory is Zerutra. Point power resistance target goes down. Undermine the power base, reduces loyalty and power. Must be above dangerously low, and power must be above low. Appease them. Increases loyalty. More loyalty, but less power. Well, that's going to take forever to do. We don't have enough political power to do any of this stuff. Arrest the scientifids. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, ally with the landowners. Will increase cult of unrest. Set to none. Oh, crap. Uh, we need that political power really badly, so... The grid is set in order to order in Koltag is currently possessed, opposed by Harmonites, most of whom are extremist agents on the payroll of foreign governments, who only wish to throw Koltag into anarchy. Banning their movement and publicly executing some of their more prominent supporters will send a message that disruptive agitation will no longer be tolerated. Constitution suspended. Oh, good God. Restoring order, though. The sun was setting, the wind blew pleasantly through his mane, but Zenud Zanarin, Zanarzid had little good to say about the current day. For starters, he had nothing to do but to mill around the streets and squares of Coltheg. The Senate may not have been disbarred, but almost all daily activities there had been halted. He couldn't complain about being paid for doing nothing if it weren't for everything else that came alongside that perk. There is fear in the eyes of good citizens, and barely concealed a contempt in the eyes of patrolling soldiers. Curfew was going to begin in an hour, which meant no zebra wanted to be caught breaking it. The consequences were less than pleasant. Zinnit was content knowing that he was safe from prosecution due to his old friendship with Zyres, but how good was that safety when he couldn't even say the name for his friends and colleagues? Last week, a fellow constitutional senator disappeared. When he tried asking about their whereabouts, he only received vague non-answers about taking a vacation in Mak Makawaya. 
The euphemism, the euphemism wasn't lost on him, though. Speaking of his colleagues, some have left the nation on more favorable terms. They all agreed. The peace and order that we got from this coup wasn't worth the freedom we lost. Zinut considered at times that he should follow their hoofsteps, but every time his answer remained the same. Cold egg needed him in these trying times. The same well thought was shared with every these people who remained. It will get better one way or another. Oh, we lose one political power every day. Holy shnikes. Well, if that's the case, let's at least spend what we got right now. Oh, never mind. Uh, how do we spend this 25 political power? Um, acquire study blueprint. That's a lot of naval XP. Wow. Or you get 20, 20, 20. Let's go. We're going to go with that one. Oh, good God. I should not have clicked on that. Jesus Christ. That's so bad. Um, forced disappearances of constitutionalists. Conveniently for us, constitutionalist senators and supporters have begun to disappear in recent days. Unsubstantiated numerous rule that they were actually being secretly arrested, imprisoned, tortured, and executed. Naturally, the junta would deny having any involvement with these mysterious abductions. Ally with the landowners. Instead of seeing rural magnets as a threat, they should have to be seen as a p powerful potential allies. After all, few zebras have more of an incentive to maintain order than them, and their wealth and resources will no doubt improve or be helpful in asserting control over the countryside. Therefore, various concessions will be offered to ensure their loyalty and support and arrest the scientifids. Contrary to their benign reputation, the scientifids are far from harmless technocrats. We have ample evidence that they have been actively plotting to usurp our authority. In light of this, all members and supporters of the scientific clique are to be arrested and investigated for conspiracy and treason. The other the agreement to pursue national autarky. We might go with that one. I wanted to go with the left one here earlier, but you now we'll see in just a little bit. Hold a constitutional referendum. Now that the destabilizing forces which once threatened to overwhelm the nation have been contained, we can begin to look towards the future. A new constitution needs to be approved by the populace to replace a fatally flawed one that was suspended. Therefore, a referendum shall be held, one supervised closely by the military, of course. Two branches of the military balanced. Army of mercenaries, a professional army, which we didn't get to last time since we did get cooed. Blessed by the Aztarta, which looks pretty nice. Ten percent more breakthrough, that's pretty good. Blessed by Zam. Ooh. That seems, that seems pretty awesome, actually. The new constitution. Shortly after Koltag's ruling military junta revealed the proposed constitution to the public, a controversial and highly controlled referendum was held to determine if it would be adopted. The outcome was never in doubt, as the vote was clearly manipulated with countless reported rigging, coercion, and voter intimidation, alongside a tidal wave of government propaganda encouraging citizens to vote positively. In the end, the proposed constitution was approved by over two-thirds of voters. Political opponents have objected to these results to no effect. It was already in the process of being promulgated. The new constitution uh, reaffirms Batrum Zars as the Sufrit of Kolteg, while assigning many seats in the Senate and the popular assembly to military officers. It also requires that all elected senators be approved by the junta before being allowed to take office, although its stated goal is to transition the country from its current military government to a civilian one. It's apparent that nothing in the administration will happen without the military's approval. Responding to the zebras concerned about these anti-democratic elements, Zars exclaimed that a level of armed institutional oversight is necessary in order to preserve peace and prevent domestic upheaval. Cold Egg is born again. Remove factionalism and remove a political instability, which I was wondering when we get rid of that. Add loyal landowners, which gives us even more political power, basically. We get stability. We get better consumer goods, constitution suspended with military's constitution, more political power, less stability now, uh, more division organization, better surrender limit, better war support, conscription laws, oh my goodness. So now we're looking, okay, military's constitution, thank you. Loyal landowners, I love the landowners. Treating a skyfall, that's pretty decent. Uh, rural guard, nice. Uh, political chiefs, awesome. As well as army of mercenaries, which is, eh, we're working on it. And we actually get a political power day, whoa, whoa. Colton unrest. Now, I've not completed the reports to the Eastern Garrisons, which I don't think we can do, but we're going to secure Kal Alpaca again anyways. Lamba is the cult state of Kar Alpaca from us after the Storm King's invasion in order to gain sea access for themselves since then. The territory has been out of our hooves, but time has come to rectify this. Of course, there'll be no asking nicely. We'll retake what is rightfully ours by force. If Colta is a subject, they'll unlock a decision as well. Kar Alpaca. Well, let's see. Let's go over here. I did convert a lot of these divisions so that we would have... Uh, artillery and guns. They're only 12 combo with, which is not good enough, in my opinion. So, let's go do this. Stuff. Anyways. There you go. Need more guns now. Mm, undermine the power base. I don't mind increasing this, but let's see. Who else do we have around here? Mastermind. Still the same thing. Is this same, all the same since we did get cooed? That's not bad. Still. Artillery, motorized, army drill. We don't have anyone here for army XP. We need more population, though. Let me description this, please. We need to mobilize more, 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 more. More conflict decision. Uh, coastal guns, fortify the west. Appoint a Kosufrit. A new constitution still requires a Sufrit to roll with a Kosufrit. Due to the demands of the officer corps, therefore one must now be appointed. It is essential that a capable and reliable candidate is selected, or else the consequences could, of course, prove disastrous. 
there's going to be a lot of different paths we can take with this nation, but I'm hoping we choose the right ones. And by the right ones, I mean the most fun ones, depending on the situation, of course. Um, resistance is getting better around here. 44, 50, oh, 56%, Jesus Christ. That's kind of high. Oh, what is this? I wanted to add a cool bonus for fighting naval battles near the coast here, but apparently it's impossible to do anything like that. Can't even use an effect to add static modifiers on naval provinces. SMH my head. I'll keep this focused as in case it becomes possible in the future. Nice. Whoever wrote that, thank you. I appreciate that you're being very transparent. I really do. <coughs> uh, restore the rule guard. We already have that, though. Yeah. If you want to about this, please go ahead. Invite the Fedara girls. Ooh, girls. Colthin will violently secede from Colthage. Can be Colthage Republic can be core by Colthagenian Republic using the integration occupation law. If average compliance with occupied states reaches forty percent, oh that's cool. Control the media. Reduce political power and stability. Get party popularity. More penalties. Supremacies. More. Central bank. Ooh, I like that one too. More construction speed. Invite the Fedara girls. Yes, please. Many called the Genian Zebras have studied a broad wing body, and among them are a pair of economists known as the Fedara girls. Uh, they are proponents of libertarian economic theories and advocate pro business policies as they align with Batrun Zar's views. They shall be invited to provide economic advice for the military junta, which will be a great thing. So, foreign policy, when can we raid? Of course, maybe we should first try to train. But a call for Sufrit. The Sufrit's right to hoofs the zebra. Appearances were everything, and while Zars took a heavy hoofed approach to ensuring the safety of Kolthag, certain traditions remained immutable. The position of the Kol Sufrit remained noticeably empty, even though it was functionally useless at the stage. Like a bent nail, but there are a certain prestige to the holder, which meant throwing a bone to the Balzanquet was out of the question, but other zebras would appreciate the gesture. Mazel Shazar, Zerutra, was known to be a stallion of ambition, and perhaps a little unreliable when the push comes to shove. It was clear that he was never content with enough with what he had, and the position of Kosufri would certainly placate his ego for the time being, not to mention. It can be seen as a proper reward for all the hard work he's ever done over the years, ensuring the continued rule of Kolteg's government. Jebzel Zoblos, not the most stable individual. How could a mare be so cruel and vindictive? However, showing her favor would send a clear message to any who would dare, dare to resist. Just as long as she remained far from Zara's vicinity, then everything would be fine. Finally, Zaru Ochozor seemed to be the best pick when it came to not raising a fuss. Oh, respected, quite brilliant, and a designer of many weapons the Koltangian army uses. His appointment would surely be seen as the Junta aiming for a moderate, tender approach. However, Ochozor has little interest in chasing after the medals and titles, and is more than content enough in his current position. Making him close to free would be a move without any real benefit. Remove that. Oh, do we have that right now? Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Um, more political power would be good. Better resistance target. Increases power and loyalty, reduces loyalty by their warlords. This person is not bad, group of population is directly hired. More artillery attack, that's not bad either. Um, I want to go with this one. As much as I want Jebzel Zablos, uh, we get more political power with this person, so. And resistance target goes down, so. Hey, not bad. As it's slowly going down. At least in theory it should be, yeah, 50%. So we are at 40, 50. 46, which is actually very good for us. Uh, Warlord disloyalty. Oh god, dang it, what the heck. One or more members of the military unit does have grown dissatisfied with desires and is now conspire against them. Their loyalty must be secured as soon as possible or else will be dire consequences. Oh, both are dangerously low. Oh crap. Warlord ambitions. One or more of the members of the military junta have grown so powerful that they now begin to see themselves as a rightful sufrit. If they're not appear appeased or weakened, they might conspire against him. Dangerous low, dangerous low. Well, crap. We, how can we do this one? Uh, must, loyalty must be below high. Yeah, it is dangerously high. Moderate loyalty is dangerously low. To this one. Increases power and loyalty, so we have high power and high lo and relatively high loyalty. So, what if we did that? Appease undermine his power base. Warlord disloyalty. So we gotta focus on this one faster and more quickly. Um, I'm not sure what we're supposed to do here. Cause how are we supposed to do all this stuff? Active for 180 days when selected. This is the loyalty of both Shebslos. Give power. It's dangerously high. And moderate. All right, so we have warlord ambitions. Gradually lo lose loyalty. How are we supposed to contain all this stuff? You don't give enough political power for any of this stuff here. A point. Increases loyalty. Increases loyalty. Okay, so they're all high, moderate, moderate, moderate. 
We need to lower their loyalty, or I mean power. Um, I'm not sure. Are we supposed? Do we have the right amount of political power we're supposed to get? This seems very not easy to do. 1.26 is not bad at all, but at the same time, uh, is there anything else we could do about that? Military actions, attack. Um, warlord ambitions. Effect not completed. Reduces loyalty of any warlord with dangerously high power. Completed. Well, they're all dangerously high. Crap. But peas increases loyalty. You get more stability when you do those. When removed, reduces power and loyalty. We'll probably do this one then. When selected. Make it 5% stability back, but reduces his loyalty. Oh. Oh god. Grand territory to them? Increases loyalty of Zablos. is moderate. Uh, Fedara girls. Also, if you want to read about everyone has a uh, prize, please go ahead. Oh, come on. We could use that political power. And loans for recovery. Of course, there's that one too. The boom bus cycle. Ooh. Consumer goods. I look for political power, though. Establish a central bank. Banking in Coltheg has been, long been exclusively under the control of various patrician families. The Fedara girls have proposed a banking reform that would treat or create a central state-owned bank, allowing more direct control over the monetary policy while also closely supervising the patrician banks. The Fedara girls, thus we believe it to be clear, as Sufred Batrun's eyes, that a proposal for restoring the economic prosperity of Coltheg has merit, concluded Elisha. It's backed by reason, uh, proven correct by empirical evidence in the world around us. Tabnit chipped in. But Chun Zars lightly tapped their hoof on this elegant table, no longer marred by the imbecile Zelafel. Your talk has been most detailed, but I'm no economist of your skill. What I do know, however, is that Zarka must have some good reason to have previously reject your ideas. He was many things, but always smart with his money. There was such a waste of time. This was such a waste of time. Only thing learned was these Fadara girls were now how the socioeconomic factors determine the success and wealth of a nation, or something like that. It got muddled rather quickly. Elishad and Tabnet were undeterred, trotting out the room without a word. Before questioning dissent could be raised, they returned, carrying together on their backs, which was rather thick tome, which was promptly tossed on the table to pour woodwork, creaking in English. What another clear skies of Zebrica was this? This is what we call the brick, Sufrit Batrunzaras. A uh, detailed, thorough study on the state of the Carthaginian Colth economy dating to when industrialization first began. Pages 6 to 479 offer a diagnosis of the nation's current situation. Pages 481 to 1242 offer solutions through specific policies afterwards. There's a list of citations and creatures involved in the creation. Batrunzaras was still in a state of shock until Tabnet raised her soft voice again. We have a more condensed version as well. With their aid, the Junta, I mean Kothag, shall prosper. Um, so we gotta lower at least one of these, but... Uh, oh, this seems kind of unfair, you know? I don't mind having better loyalty, but it's gonna lower loyalty and stability and power. So, like, we have 90 days, so there's nothing we can do. It'll lower their loyalty, but come on. Yeah, I think... I don't know. I mean, we're not done yet, obviously, with this campaign or anything like that, but, like... I think there needs to be a realignment of seeing how much political power you get. Or maybe we should get way more to up offset all this other stuff to balance things out because you don't you, you don't get enough. At least so far, it doesn't seem like it. Pass like Kotva. Control the media, which I don't want to do because that lowers our political power for now. Rearmament be nice, which we talked about earlier. The case be this is pretty good too. Um, improve the lives of the workers. That'd be good to get. Project Otsutima. Amend the constitution. The loyalty of all the war warlords must be high, or their power must be negligible. Uh, that's not bad. Well, Pass by Kultva. Kultvins are in dire need of a reminder that they are Kultvinians. The troublemakers of bandits of Kultva will be cleaned with a direct and ruthless application of military force. There will be no negotiations or concessions. The rebel scum will either surrender or they will die. Either or. Their choice. Uh, if we get cooed, I'm just going to use Khan's command, I'll be honest. So. If not completed, reduces loyalty with any dangerous type of power. Like completed. Appease him. At least it's high for now, but it's going to go lower. Control the media? No. Rearmament. Employ the servants of the Dark One. 
Zim so Zanid is. A uh, respected spy master to spider ties with an underground cult worshipping Zargon, the Lord of the Deep. Her contacts would be very useful for ensuring the internal security of Cult Egg. In return for leaving uh, the cult alone, oh, look at that, uh, they can use their espionage talents to help the government to track down foreign agents, agitators, and dissidents. I want to attack. Let me try it. Yeah, try it anyways. Combine arms, motorize. Sure, why not? Get those tactics going. Come on, you better win. There's only four there, but come on, you can do it. Get us that army XP. The Colpin Revolution. Oh, are you kidding me? The crisis came slowly. First, from creature to creature, the message was passed, and they became louder and louder. A ripple into a splash, into a wave, and finally into a storm. The call of revolution has arrived in Colt Van Zeshmunazash, Zarutid, has emerged from hiding to answer it. Revealing themselves in the center of Kazil Zeb, along with their top general, Ozid. The LAE members, along with the city's population, joined them and quickly drove the Coltaginian garrison out of the city. When the fort at the top of the Great Hill was taken, a new banner was raised, a red horseshoe of the farmer over the yellow banner of hope. Colt stood up and though not kneel again without bloodshed. Let's get over here first. If we can. I have victory in Kar Alpaca. As expected, our daring incursion into reclaim the provinces of Kar Alpaca has in, ended in total victory. Thanks to the bravery of our troops, Kar Alpaca returns to the fold and our enemies are humiliated. Officials have already begun the process of assimilating their lost territories and establishing Carthaginian rule. Wonderful. Nice. Awesome. Zerutid? Well, we finally found him eventually, but like still. Come on, bro. Oh. It's a core. It's a core. Oh, well, should have waited for that, whatever. That's stupid. I mean, it's already a core. I don't know. There's some things that, like I said, I, I would like to see maybe redone, maybe a little bit. Uh, part of this is just kind of like, why? Well, that's pretty bad. There you go. Um, do that one. The boom employed the servants of the Dark One. Or the boom bust cycle. It seems pretty good. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, our reorientation of the Carthaginian economy and the effects of the economic policies applied by the Fadar girls have already begun to yield stunning results. Liberalizing the economy by ending all state intervention has led to rapid economic growth. Perhaps to rapid, but that's a problem for the future. I know I'm speaking very quickly, but I'd like to speak quickly. So, moderate and moderate, which is good. Appease them. Loyalty will increase, but we need dangerously how to be lowered. Zoblos and Ochoros. Should be able to win pretty easily. You no know, planes, which sucks too, but whatever. That's so unfair that they get to liberate themselves, even though we got literally more than two thirds, basically two thirds of the country, like, under us, so I don't understand that either. Really, use more pony power though. Nice. Keep going in. And we gotta get ready for those guys too. Increases power and loyalty. I'll increase that later. Maybe one of you guys right there. There you go. That'll do it. Uh, get a bit more like that. That's nice. That's very nice. Well, after this one, rearmament. A substantial portion of Colthag's military industry was destroyed in the aftermath of the Storm King's invasion. Given the dire threats we have faced, ensuring the stability of the nation will require completely rebuilding the productive capabilities and capacity. Pretty much, man. Alright, so we killed off most of our army. 
Obviously not all of it, but you know, a good amount. Um, a little headed down, but do it anyways because we need it. Need it. Dangerously low. That's so bad. That's really not fair at all. That's really not fair. Moderate, moderate, moderate. Dangerously high, which is stupid. You don't. You just don't get enough political power for that. Or it needs to be modified. I think more, in my opinion. Would y'all like to go in and around? There we go. This is, the Civil War here was stupid, especially when you have two-thirds. This was cord earlier. What the heck, wasn't it? This was definitely cord. Ah, uh, I don't know. This feels like this just is not done yet. This needs to be, like, looked at again. Because this was cord earlier. I guarantee you it was cord. And now it's not. That's so dumb. Man, come on. Control the media? I'd like to, but we need all that political power. Of course, we can court again once we get higher compliance, but still. This area should be able to cord. So now we gotta get it come over here. And prepare to die, basically. Um, what do we have? Support commit? Yes. We're gonna need to dig in pretty heavily. Nice. Get a lot of guns. Rearmament. Um, less garrisons, growth speed, uh, anti insurgency tactics. Yeah, that'd be good to do. Many months of fighting in Cold Five have given us a tremendous amount of experience in fighting irregular forces. This knowledge should be put to developing our counterinsurgency tactics. We must take a holistic view and catalog on military, political, economic, psychological, and civic actions that could be taken to defeat an insurgency. Well, we're going to come back up here and do this again. Because we're forced to. Oh, or do we get a court already? Okay, so that's good. They actually did core this, which is nice. We have to for this piece. There you go. And, ooh, science. Ooh, I like lips. Give me those lips. That's how I determine whether we want someone or not, because of their lips. Yay. Garantia. Rearmament. Anti insurgency tactics. Alright. Getting close to 150-ish. 134.34. Um, Counterintelligence. Extraction rate. Permit private education. Parents who are dissatisfied with the government-funded schools should have more options when it comes to their full education. We will permit the creation of private schools which are not funded or operated by the government in practice. This will allow the army to set up its own schools and are completely independent from civilian political interference. Improve the lives of the workers. Since rebellions can only thrive when there's dissatisfaction among peasants and laborers, addressing the complaints is the best way to prevent future unrest. About true and desires will approve several laws, including a workers' compensation law and a law limiting daily work hours to help win the support of the vast lower class, which forms the core of our nation's zebra pool. Power pool. And of course, the project here. It is proposed to continue research on problems critical to a clarification of the fundamental aspects of the stimulus response relationship in biological systems. Can we get a control of an individual to the point where they will do our bidding against their will and even against fundamental laws of nature such as self preservation? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, nine days. Where are this? Oh, come on. Now they're back up higher. Dang it, come on. Um. That is, um, I, I, are you freaking kidding me? I hate this. I hate this so much. They need to reduce this. They need to edit this or something like this because this is too much. It's really too much. Either extend the days, give us more political power, or reduce the amount of political power that needed to reduce this because this is too much. It really is too much. It's just a bit too much. Um, we can do that one, which would be good. And 90 days? 90 days is a bit too much or something like this, you know? Because we have 13 days left to reduce this, which is unfair, completely unfair when you have two at the same time. Um, so I don't like that at all, but I think I've got to end the episode there because I've been doing this for quite a while. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll just see what else we have for our nation. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.